Back pain is not caused by spinal loading. New study. What's up guys, back with another educational video. And this week we are talking about spinal loading and back pain. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment Oh, the algorithm. So a new scoping review came out looking at does spinal loading predict back pain? Does it also have anything to do with back pain recovery? And does reducing it reduce the risk of back injury? Does reducing it help with recovery from back injury? Does reducing it help reduce back pain? Does increasing spinal loading increase the risk of injury? Does it increase back pain? And if you have spinal loading, does it delay the recovery of back pain? Uh, spoiler alert, this scoping review of I think over 20 studies found that spinal loading did not predict injury, did not predict back pain, and reducing spinal loading did not reduce the risk of back pain injury and did not improve recovery from back pain or injury. This goes along with a lot of the stuff that I've been saying for probably the last 18 months after I really got big into the biopsychosocial model of pain. People have a view of your spine and your body that somehow it's fragile and if you just move a little bit the wrong way, if you bend the wrong way, if you pick up something the wrong way, boom, you're gonna blow out a disc and you're never gonna be able to lift heavy again. There's so much wrong with this train of thought. First of all, our tissues of our body are very adaptable, which is when you progressively load them, they get better at handling that load. And in fact, there's actually a review that showed that lifting improved lower back pain. How is that possible? Because you're using your spine. If you never lift, if you never expose those tissues to stressors, hormesis, whenever they do come across the stressor, they're not gonna be equipped to handle it. And this is why you hear about people blowing out their back, walking down the stairs, or they, they slipped and they blew out their lower back or something like that. Which by the way, the term blowing out your lower back is nonsense. Yes, they might've had some sort of uh, disc tissue injury that they then had pain from that they didn't need a while to recover from. But if you stress those tissues progressively over time, then your body gets better at handling it. And that's why resistance training actually tends to reduce lower back pain. We have to separate that from people who say, well, Lane, you talk about how you've had back pain. Yeah, yeah, I am training to try to be the strongest person in the world for drug-free at my weight class and age. And that means I have to train at a level of intensity and volume that is always going to be right up next to what I can maximally recover from. And so if I start to exceed that, and I, I'm always going to be tipping into that area, for example, if I'm starting to get some more stress, if my sleep goes down, pretty quickly I will see back pain start to creep up because I am starting to exceed my recovery capability for my current lifestyle and my training program. That is different than your average person who's just lifting weights to get strong. As long as you are progressively loading those tissues, I'm not saying you're never gonna get an injury, you can always get an injury, but most times the biggest predictors of injury overall, the single biggest predictor overall is your current recovery status. Are you recovered from your previous sessions and prepared for your current session? And what goes into that? Sleep, stress management, appropriate progressive overload. In fact, of several good coaches I've had, there have been times where even though I'm getting stronger at a pretty quick rate based on how my metrics are going, we add load slowly. Even though maybe the sheet says, maybe the metrics say, hey, you could add 25 pounds for next week. We might only add five or 10. Because we're looking at, we don't wanna outpace that recovery capability. And if I continue to progressively load, eventually in a couple weeks, I'm gonna be at that load anyway, only now my tissues will have had more time to adapt and prepare for it. And if I make a miscalculation, I've only gone over by just a little bit rather than blowing past my recovery capability and possibly risking a pretty severe acute injury. Unfortunately, this isn't the stuff people wanna hear. They wanna hear, well, you got injured because you just moved just that little bit the wrong way. And if you do this funny corrective exercise and you never move this way again, you won't get injured again. And, and that's just not the case, okay? There are people who pull round back deadlifting and 
they hardly ever get any kind of back pain or injury. Some of the best pullers in the world pull round back. And then you have other people who pull with a completely straight back who get back injuries. And in fact, I will tell you guys a perfect example of what I'm talking about here is I used to pull with a very straight back. Probably about seven, eight years ago was like the last time I pulled like that. And I actually found that I was getting more back pain and more injuries because whenever I'd get fatigued, as I would get to those final few reps or final few sets, as my fatigue was high, and by the way, when you're training for a powerlifting meet, you're always gonna get to the point where you're training with high fatigue if you wanna have enough training stimulus to actually get stronger. When I got to those sets and those reps, I would start to slowly round because I just was so fatigued and then I would get back pain. Then I would suffer some kind of, because my tissues weren't used to being in those positions under that kind of load. And so about five years ago, I started reformulating my deadlift where I actually purposely pull with a rounded upper back and just a very neutral lower back. Not even trying to arch my lower back, just trying to stay neutral, make sure I brace my core. And since then, my levels of back pain have been much lower and I have not suffered an acute injury on a deadlift. And so I attribute that to the fact that I slowly changed my deadlift style. I slowly increased the load with a flexed upper back and over time my tissues got adapted to that and now when I'm in those positions under fatigue and under load, my body can actually handle it because it's used to it. Another great example of somebody who has very non-traditional form, you know, this gets away from lower back pain, but just talking about tissue resilience, is my friend Leo Bavois, who is uh, the French national champion in the 69 kilogram class for women. At 69 kilos, she has squatted 225 kilos, just to put that in freedom units. She's about 152 pounds, actually she's about 150 pounds, and she squatted 496, okay? And when she squats, first off, she leans very far forward like I do, and her knees cave. On every single rep, her knees cave and come together. And she has never, to my knowledge, harmed her knees. Why? Because she has always squatted like that. Those tissues have become adapted to that and she can tolerate that. I am not saying you should purposely have a rounded back or you should purposely have knee cave. What I'm saying is you should aim to have efficient, good form. But if that form breaks down a little bit, you are not fragile. The only way that those kinds of small form breakdowns really matter is if you are training one way, if you are lifting with really good form and then it breaks down under fatigue and stress or load and now you're putting your body in a position it's never been in before under a heavier load and more fatigue, that is gonna be a risk for an acute injury. But again, this idea that, oh, if you, Load your spine too much, you're gonna have pain. No, I know plenty of people who are completely sedentary who have horrific back pain, okay? I have family members who have bad sciatica and they are very sedentary. Sedentary is way worse. When you are older, you are going to have pain. You can be strong and have pain or you can be weak and have pain. I choose to be strong and have pain and, but the research suggests you might actually have a little bit less if you actually lift. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. I will catch you next week.